Hi everyone, I'm Wu Yingxi. I, together with the other four group members, are going to present the problem solving related to a wheelchair for this daily course. Our group members are Doris, Heixin, Yongkang, Nasri, and me, and we are from Group 7. During our case study, our main focus will be the Newton's second law of motion, rolling friction, law of conservation of energy, moment, and vibration. So let's start with the Newton's second law of motion. According to this law, it states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force applied on it and inversely proportional to its mass. So the formula derived from this law is as shown in Figure 1, which is F equals to MA. As our situation is that the wheelchair is going to slide out an inclined surface, just like the free body diagram shown in figure 2. So there are two forces that we can analyze, which is summation of Fx and summation of Fy, and the formulas to calculate these are as shown in the slide. Next, rolling friction is defined as a force that resists motion when the body is rolling down a surface. But it's also a force required to keep the tires of the vehicle moving, such as it exists when the wheelchair is moving down the road. Figure 3 shows the different values of rolling friction coefficient for different types of surfaces and the formula to calculate the friction force is shown in the slide. Now, let's move on to the law of conservation of energy. According to this law, there will be no energy loss in a closed system. So the formula derived from this law will be the summation of initial energy in the system is equal to the summation of final energy in that system. When the wheelchair is sliding down the inclined surface, the initial energy is the potential energy and the final energy includes the kinetic energy and work done by friction. So the formula to calculate the potential energy, kinetic energy and work done by friction is shown in the slide. As for the moment about a point, it can be determined by referring either a free body diagram or a kinetic diagram. So the summation of moment at a point is equal to zero when we are referring to a free body diagram, while the summation of moment at a point is equal to the kinetic moment at that point when we are referring to a kinetic diagram. So the difference between a free body diagram and a kinetic diagram is as shown in figure 4. Vibration occurs when the body is having an oscillating motion and displaced from an equilibrium position. So according to figure 5, there are two types of vibrations which are free vibration and force vibration. Both these vibrations include them and undam vibration. Undam vibration will be focused in our case study. When a person is sitting on a wheelchair and the displacement of the spring occurs downward vertically, force can be obtained. The formula to calculate the force is shown in figure 6, which is F equals to KY. Next, the displacement, velocity, and acceleration of the spring during vibration can be calculated through the formulas shown in the slide. In order to reduce the vibration of a wheelchair, spring is added for suspension. This is most commonly used in a powered wheelchair just as shown in figure 7, as the spring can be compressed to add in absorption of impact. Hello and good morning. My name is Muhammad Nazri bin Nasir. So the objective in this assignment is to apply all the three learning outcomes that we have learned in this semester which are solving dynamic problem of accelerating particle, solving problem of accelerating energy body in 2D and analyze kinetics and kinematics problems in vibrating particles. Hello and good day Dr. Chan. My name is Lai Pei I'm going to present the methodology part of our wheelchair dynamic assignment. The apparatus and materials we use in this assignment are a 15 kg wheelchair, a measuring tape, an inclined plane, a smooth surface, a rough surface, a tripod stand, and a smartphone. In L01, we solve dynamic problems of accelerating particles by using the equations of motion. In KK2, we let a 50 kg student sit on a 15 kg wheelchair to slide down and 20 degree inclined plane. The displacement and time taken to travel down the inclined plane are recorded to calculate the acceleration and final velocity of the wheelchair by using the equation stated here. Moving on to LO2, we solve problems of accelerating rigid bodies in 2D by using the principle of conservation of energy. In this law of conservation of energy formula, T1 indicates the initial potential energy, V1 is the initial kinetic energy, T2 is the final potential energy, V2 is the final kinetic energy, and UF is the work done against the frictional force. The calculated final velocity is then compared with the final velocity obtained in L01. We also use planar kinetic equation of motion to solve L02. We manipulate two different surface conditions which are rough and smooth surface respectively. This video is taken while traveling on smooth surface, and the other video is taken on rough surface. The pushing force and the time taken to travel on rough surface is higher than the smooth surface. The coefficient of friction of two surfaces are referred in figure 3. The obtained acceleration of the wheelchair and normal forces on big, both big and small wheel 
of different ground surface conditions. In LO3, we analyze kinematics and kinetics problem in vibrating particles. We assume that the spring is installed in the wheelchair. We find the spring constant and the natural frequency of spring by using undamped free vibration of spring method while the student is sitting on the wheelchair. We also calculate motion of the spring by using equation of motion of spring when the student stands up from the wheelchair. Thank you, Paisin. My name is Doris and I will now present the calculations of our assignment. I will first start with the first learning outcome which is solve dynamic problems of accelerating particles. The problems that we are going to solve is what is the acceleration of the wheelchair and what is the final velocity of the wheelchair. As you can see in figure 11, a free body diagram of a student of 50 kg sliding down an inclined plane on the 15 kg wheelchair is drawn. The center of mass of the student and wheelchair is assigned as G1 and G2, and all the forces acting on the student and wheelchair is drawn as shown here. And a, a coordinate system is established, and H1 indicates the initial height of the wheelchair, while H2 is the final height. These are all the values of physical quantities needed for the calculation of L1. And as for the coefficient of rolling friction, which is 0.3282, since there is no movement in the y-axis, hence the acceleration of the wheelchair in y-axis is 0 meter per second squared. Since the wheelchair is sliding down from rest, the initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Firstly, we obtain the weight of the student and wheelchair using the formula W equals to mg, and these are the values obtained. And since the student and the wheelchair is sliding down an inclined plane, hence their weight have to be resolved into their x and y component according to the coordinate system that we have established using trigonometry method. By referring to the free body diagram drawn in figure 11, we apply the formula summation of fy equals to may, and since ay equals to zero, we eventually obtain the summation of the forces acting on both wheels is equals to 599.2, which is which we label as equation one. And then we apply the formula summation of fx equals to max, and eventually we will obtain equation two. By substituting equation 1 into equation 2, we will eventually obtain the acceleration in the x axis, which is 0 0.33 meter per second square. To find the final velocity of the wheelchair at a uh, time equals to 7 seconds, we assume that the acceleration is constant, and by using the formula v equals to u plus at, we obtain the final velocity of the wheelchair is 2.31 meter per second. Moving on to LO2, which is solve problems of accelerating rigid bodies in 2D. The problems that we are going to solve here is what is the final velocity of the wheelchair. The free body diagram shown here is the same as in L01. These are all the values needed for the calculation of L02, and the coefficient of rolling friction remains the same, as same goes to the initial velocity, and the summation of normal forces is what we have obtained from L01, and the final height of the wheelchair is 0 meter. By referring to the free body diagram, we obtain the initial height of the wheelchair by applying trigonometry method, and this is the value that we have obtained. And we sum up the mass of the student of wheelchair, which is 65 kg. By applying the principle of conservation of energy, which is the summation of U1 equals the summation of U2 plus the work done again frictional force, we eventually obtain V equals to 2.31 meter per second, which is the same as in L01. Next, I will explain another method we use to achieve L02, in which there are two cases to be considered, which is case 1 smooth surface and case 2 rough surface. I will explain case 1 first. The problems that we're going to solve is what is the acceleration of the wheelchair and what is the normal forces acting on each four wheels of the wheelchair. As you can see in figure 12, a free body diagram of a student pushing another 50 kg student on a smooth surface on a 15 kg wheelchair is drawn. The center of mass of the student and the wheelchair is assigned as G1 and G2 as shown here, and all the forces acting on the student and wheelchair is drawn. A coordinate system is established as well. These are all the values needed for the calculations of this case, in which the external pushing force we assume it as 175 newton, and the coefficient of rolling friction we assume as 0 0.19. And since there is new no movement in the y axis, hence ay goes to 0 meter per second square. Firstly, the external pushing force is resolved into its x and y component according to the coordinate system that we have established using trigonometry method, and these are the values obtained. By referring to the free body diagram in figure 12 just now, we apply the formula summation of Fy equals to May, where Ay goes to zero, hence we eventually obtain the summation of normal forces acting on wheel A and wheel B, which is equation 3. And then we apply summation of Fx equals to Max, and eventually we will obtain equation 4. By substituting equation 3 to equation 4, we obtain the acceleration, which is 0 0.491 meter per second square. And now we want to determine the normal forces acting on two wheels. Hence, a kinetic diagram is needed, as shown in figure 13. 
By applying the formula, which is summation of moment about point A equals to summation of kinetic moment about point A, eventually we obtain mb equals to 294.78 Newton. And we substitute back this value into equation 3 and we obtain Na, which is this value. And to obtain the normal forces acting on H from view A and H from view B, we divide Na and Nb by 2 as shown here. Now I'll explain case 2, rough surface. We are going to solve the same problem as in case 1, which is find the acceleration and the normal forces. And this is the pre body diagram for this case, which is rough surface, with all the forces drawn and a coordinate system is established. And these are all the values needed for the calculations, where the external pushing force we assume as 300 Newton and the coefficient of rolling friction is 0 0.35. We resolve the external force into x and y components, uh, which is similar to case 1, and this is the value obtained. And we apply summation of Fy equals to May, and eventually we obtain equation 5. And then we apply summation of Fx equals to Max, and we obtain equation 6. And by substituting equation 5 into equation 6, we eventually obtain the acceleration, which is 0 0.351 meter per second squared. And to determine the normal forces acting on both wheels, we need a kinetic diagram. And the kinetic diagram is drawn as shown in figure 15 here. By applying the summation of moment about point A equals to summation of kinetic moment about point A, eventually we obtain the value for NB, which is uh, shown here. And then we substitute the value of MB back to equation 5 to obtain NA, which is shown here. And then to determine the normal forces acting on each front wheel and each rear wheel, we divide NA and NB by 2, as shown here. Lastly, I will explain the calculations for L3, which is analyze kinematics and kinetics problems in vibrating particle. The problems that we are going to solve in L3 is what is the spring constant of the spring, the natural frequency, the equation that describes the motion of the spring, and the maximum velocity, maximum displacement, and maximum acceleration of the spring. We assume that spring is attached to the wheelchair to act as a shock absorber, and these are the values provided. We assume that the force exerted on the spring is equivalent to the weight of the student, hence F equals to mg, and this is the value obtained. We assume that when the student exerts the force onto the wheelchair, the spring is compressed with a displacement of y equals to negative 0.03 meter. It is negative sign because we assume downwards position as negative. And we can obtain the spring constant of the spring, which is shown here. And then by using the spring constant value, we can obtain the natural frequency, which is shown here. And next, we, we want to find the equation that describes the motion of the spring. So we need initial conditions, and these are the initial conditions that we have determined for our case. And firstly, as shown here, this is the general equation that describes the displacement of spring. And by substituting the value of natural frequency that we have obtained, we, can, uh, we obtain equation 7. And then to determine the constant B, we uh, substitute the initial condition into equation 7, and this is the value of B that we have obtained. And we differentiate the equation that describes the, the displacement of the spring to obtain the equation of velocity, as shown here. And we substitute the value of B and natural frequency that we have obtained, hence we obtain equation 8. And to determine the constant A, we substitute another initial condition into equation 8, and eventually we obtain the value of constant A, which is 0. And we differentiate the equation that describes velocity of the spring just now to obtain this equation that describes the acceleration of the spring. And by substituting all the known values that we have calculated just now, we can obtain all the equations that describe the displacement, velocity, and acceleration of the spring, as shown here. And by, okay, by looking at these three equations, we can find the maximum value for each of them, which is shown here. Good day, everyone. Today, I would like to present the discussion part of the report. In the learning outcome one, we need to solve the dynamic problems of the accelerating particles. In our case study, we need to find an acceleration of a student of 50 kg sliding down an incline plane on the 50 kg wheelchair. A free body diagram is drawn to indicate all the forces acting on the subject. In this free body diagram, the acceleration of the subject is solely due to its weight. However, there is kinetic friction that is produced by the rolling resistance of the wheel contacting the ground which opposes the direction of motion of the subjects. Then, we can apply the Newton's third law of motion in the y-axis because the forces are in equilibrium and Newton's second law of motion in the s-axis because forces are not in equilibrium. The subject undergoes the acceleration because the value of f of the acceleration is positive. Then, we can apply the principle of conservation of energy to solve the problems of accelerating rigid bodies in 2D. This is the graph of the total energy of the system, including the kinetic energy and the potential energy ranges from the negative amplitude to the positive amplitude. The initial energy of the system at the starting point can be calculated. The initial kinetic energy of the system is zero joule because the initial velocity is zero meter per second. The starting point is the maximum height of the pathway. Therefore, the gravitational potential energy of the subject will be maximum. Since, since the friction is acting in the opposite direction of the motion of the wheelchair, the value of the work done by friction will be negative as theta equals to 180 degree when using the formula work done by the friction equals to 
not product between the kinetic friction and its displacement. Then the final energy of the system at the ground can be calculated when the subjects reach the ground at a height of zero meter. Then the gravitational potential energy becomes zero joule. Since the velocity of the subjects is maximum, then the kinetic energy of the subjects will be maximum. Then we can calculate the acceleration of the subjects and also the normal reaction force acting on the all four wheels on the smooth surface and also the rough surface. A free body diagram and also the kinetic diagram on the both smooth surface and also the rough surface are drawn as shown in the slide. An XY inertial co coordinate system is established on the smooth surface and also the rough surface. There is some difference between the smooth surface and also the rough surface. The, in the X axis, to the left is positive direction. And in the Y axis, the upward is the positive direction in, on the smooth surface. However, on the rough surface, to the right is positive direction in the X axis and upward is the positive direction in the Y axis. In order to calculate the value of the normal force acting on all four wheels and the acceleration of the subject, three equations of the motion are applied to form three simultaneous equations. Then, let's compare the acceleration of the subjects on the smooth surface and rough surface. Acceleration of the wheelchair in the case one, which is smooth surface, Ax equals to 0.491 meter per second square, is greater than on the case two, which is the rough surface, Ax equals to 0.351 meter per second square. This is because the coefficient of rolling friction on smooth surface is smaller than that of the rough surface. Hence, lesser frictional force is present at the smooth surface to oppose the motion of the wheelchair. Next, we need to analyze the kinematics and kinetics problems in the vibrating particles for the learning outcome 3. We observe the vibration of the spring under the undamped free vibration when the patient stands up. Undamped free vibration occurs when there is no external force acting on the spring and the spring will vibrate back and forth from its equilibrium position continuously without loss of energy. In real life, undamped vibration will not occur due to the presence of external force and internal force. The magnitude of maximum displacement velocity and acceleration of the spring will decrease over the time and finally, the spring will stop vibrating. Thus, damped free vibration occurs. However, we assume that the spring will under ideal undamped free vibration to proceed with the calculation. Okay, next we move on to the conclusion. So in conclusion, we are able to apply the dynamics knowledge that we have learned throughout this semester to achieve of the, all the three objectives, which are LO1, uh, solving problem of accelerating particle, LO2, solving problem of accelerating rigid body in 2D, LO3, analyzing kinematics and kinetic problems in vibrating particles. So for LO1, we are able to determine the velocity and acceleration of the wheelchair using Newton's second law of motion and equation of motion. So the value of the velocity obtained equal to 2.31 meter per second and the acceleration is 0 0.33 meter per second square. We apply the principle of conservation of energy on the wheelchair to find the velocity which are the same as LO1. Next, we select two different surfaces with con different conditions to compare the acceleration. So the result uh, proves that the acceleration on smooth surface is larger than rough surface. This is because there is less frictional force opposing motion of wheelchair on the smooth surface compared to the rough surface. Next, for LO3, we investigate the vibration of spring attached to the wheelchair to absorb shock. We determine the spring constant by knowing the force acting on the spring and displacement of the spring. Next, by knowing the spring constant, the natural frequency can be calculated. Then, after determining the initial condition of the spring, the, we can find the equation that describes the displacement velocity and acceleration of the spring. Then using the equation, we calculate to obtain maximum value of each quantity. The spring is assumed to experience an undamped free vibration since its motion is solely maintained by gravity and its restoring force. However, this is not true in real life because there is always air resistance and internal resistance that resists the oscillation of the spring causes it to be damped. That's all for me, thank you. As you can see, there is a total of 11 references that we use when we are preparing this report. That's all from our group, thank you.